So this is a quadratic uh, trig equation because you've got a sine squared x. Let's get this going. There. Okay, and sine squared x is shorthand for sine x all squared, i.e. sine x times sine x. Don't forget that. And when you work, work in your calculator, sometimes you have to put that bracket around to make it really clear. Okay, so sine x squared. So you've got to treat this like a quadratic. If I call sine x and I substitute that uh, for the variable, let's say w, then this is effectively just this equation is exactly the same as 2w squared minus w equals 1. And if you think how you'd solve that, you solve this exactly the same way. Let's just tidy that up. Plus the w there. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use our quadratic. So remember, we've got factorising. That's one method. And if factorising doesn't work, um, the other method we've got is the quadratic formula. This is a long calculator paper. And then if you're on your calculator, your 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 GDC graphic display calculator can solve it for you automatically. You just type in the functions and find the solution. So let's go for the factorising option because this is a non-calculator paper. Um, so first of all, I need to set all quadratics equal to zero because when I've done that, uh, I can factorise, and one of the factors has to be zero. So I'm going to make this a zero. So again, I'm going to do SAM did in reverse as always. So SAM did or SAM uh, sorry SAD net let's get that pen again SAD net should be there for your horses um, and so I'm going to start rearranging that what's the first thing I need to do is take one from both sides which I've done here and if I take one from both sides I get 2 times squared x minus sine x minus 1 equals 0 I've now got a quadratic in the usual form that I'm used to, all equal to zero. I'm going to forget that that's sine x, and I think it's useful to use a substitution to simplify it. So I have my problem facing me now is, can I factorise 2w squared minus w minus 1? Well, factors of 1 are easy. It's true that 1 times minus 1, and they're your only options. And factors of 2 are easy because it's a prime number, so it's 1 times 2. So I know I need 2w one of the brackets and the w in the other to get 2w squared, 2w times w. And then I need to rearrange this so that I end up with minus 1w. Now if I want minus 1w, if it's 2w, it's going to be negative and 1w is going to be positive. Might be worth a quick check to see if we haven't made any mistakes at this stage so I can multiply out. I reckon strongly recommend the good method when you multiply out brackets. Because if you miss one of the terms, you can see it straight away. Whereas other methods like FOIL, it's not obvious if you've missed the term or not. 2w times w is 2w squared. w times 1 is w. Minus 1 is minus 2w. And minus 1 times 1 is minus 1. So I've got 2w squared plus w minus 2w minus 1. I've lined up units that are the same size. You'd never put tens or hundreds, so why put w for w squared? Don't. 2w squared minus w minus 1 in brackets. So there we go. Okay, so the possible options here then are either 2w minus 1 equals 0. The only way this can equal 0, all of that, is either that's 0 or that's 0. So I'm going to go for I'm not sure if I have this one, uh, 2w plus 1 equals 0 or this bracket's going to have to equal 0 because then anything times 0 is 0. In this case, w is equal 1. In this case, 2w takes away 1 from both sides, is equal to minus 1. Divide by 2 on both sides. So in this case, w is equal to minus a half. So that's the first stage step completed. We know that w equals 1 or w equals minus a half. Now the next stage is to find out what those ratios are. So again, we're looking at our non-calculator ratios up here. Well, there we want the opposite or not, yeah, because it's sine, so we want the opposite side, so here's an angle, that's the side opposite, it's 1, and there's the hypotenuse opposite the right angle, it's 2, that's a half, great. So we know that W, which is actually the sine X, because we know that's substituted at the start, so that's equal to a half, if sine X equals a half, we know that X must be 30 degrees, and to 
convert to radians, remember it's always just over 120 cm squared by 8. So that's, and then simplify the fraction, you know, divide by 10, and divide by 2. So that's 5 and 6. Okay, so we've got to be 5 and 6, but it's not plus a half, it's minus a half. So again, if we think about the sine curve, so we'll go to here, turn it on, and we'll just draw that and just make it a simple sine curve. So it's sine of x. Check our window. Uh, let's go from 0 to pi. So we don't need to go that high. So the maximum value is, the minimum value is, looks like, 1 and minus 1. So I'll just do a bit of space on the side. Okay, so there was a half. That's our solution at a half, which gave us pi over 6. But now we want minus a half. Okay, so we want minus a half. So it's not quite the same this time. Uh, it's symmetrical about pi. So if we've got a solution at half, which is pi over 6, we need to, again, add pi over 6 to 180 to find its solution at minus pi over 6. Uh, let's do that really close up. So when sine x is a half, so there's the sine x curve, when it's at a half, that would be pi over 6, and we'll name calculate all those bits. And so when it's minus a half, it's going to be pi, 180 degrees, plus the 30 to pi over 6. So pi plus pi over 6. And then 2 pi take away pi over 6 to get the second solution. And remember, just treat it as normal numbers, 1 plus a 6, and add 3 pi off, which we'll add a little bit later on. Uh, 2 take away a 6 is 1 and 5 6, otherwise known as 11 pi over 6. So there are two solutions. Um, so for this one, x would equal 7 pi over 6 or 11 pi over 6. And then same over here, we're going to have some solutions here. Well, when that's right at the maximum, it's a tangent. And so sine x equals 1 only when x equals 90 degrees. 90 degrees, same as pi over 2. So there are our solutions. And then we're going to have plus or minus lots of the period. For a sine squared x curve, uh, take a look quickly. The period is pi. But as soon as you put in a sine term with that, uh, it becomes pi over 2 pi for the period again. So let's just have a look. I'm starting with the bracket sine x. I need to update this because I did this wrong with calculating this. So I'm just going to make sure I'm aware of it. That's the only wrong one. So sine x times itself, and look, all the negatives come positive as you expect from the sine and negative by itself, where it used to go down to them because there's lots of negative values in front of it by itself, goes positive, and the period gets pi for sine squared x. But as soon as I add a sine x or cosine x, just normal sine x term for that, the period then again becomes syntax means I've typed something in incorrectly. And that's the use of negative sign for the minus sign, another common mistake. Graph it, and you can see the period then it again becomes pi over 2 pi. So it's going to go up lower to pi over 2, and that repeats itself again and again. So it's a bit clunky, difficult to have to graph, but because there's a sign x term, it draws through 2 pi. So we're at just sine squared x to draw through pi. Okay, so this is where we're at. We've got almost all the solutions, but we mustn't forget the last step, which is we can plus or minus lots of the period. And as I just showed you, the period remains at 2 pi for now, and we can have an infinite number of those. So times k to have an infinite number of them. Well, we're not going to need to plus 2 pi to any of these, because if we do add 2 pi to any of these, as we can see, we're going to go outside the range that the question has, the domain, sorry, the domain that the question has set, minus pi to 2 pi. So x can can't add 2 pi, we're going outside the domain. We can take away 2 pi. And if we took away 2 pi, well, from here we'll go beyond minus pi. 7 pi over 6, take away 2 pi, which is then 12 pi over 6. Go to minus uh, 5 pi over 6. Well, that's still in the domain of minus pi over 6. And 11 pi over 6, minus 12 pi over 6, gives us minus pi over 6. Again, that would still be in the domain for this question. So it looks like we could have another two solutions. So we've got those two solutions to add. Those are the ones we've already found. Minus pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, and minus pi over 6. So all of our solutions are going to be minus pi over 6, uh, minus 5 pi over 6. I'm drawing this the wrong way, sorry. Minus pi over 6, pi over 2, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. And they are all the 
transmission that fall in the domain minus pi is equal to pi. I've shown that on the graph down here. I look, I've put the minimum value as minus pi, so that there is minus pi. I put the maximum value as 2 pi, so here is 2 pi. And if I draw a line across roughly at minus uh, a half, it's roughly about here. And you can see we've got the 1, 2, sorry, let me redo that, which is looking for the x-intercept. So I'm going to because I've typed in the equation. Uh, let me show you what equation I've typed in when we complete the range of that. I typed in y equals 2 sine sine x minus sine x minus 1. So we're actually looking for the x-intercept, so we'll just do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's 5 coordinates, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 coordinates, I see. And remember, you do second iteration for using the PI calculator, and option 2, which is 0, to find that in the calculator, which is the calculator paper. Best of luck over to you.